Welcome to Fandom Nonsense. I'm Zach. I'm Aaron. Wait. I'm Coco? <laughs> <laughs> and also no <laughs> And getting right into it, Marvel is reportedly working on a new animated series for the upcoming Disney Plus streaming service based on the What If series of comics that explore the bizarre alternate versions of the Marvel Universe according to Slash Film. The What If comics were one-shot adventures that lived outside the comics canon posing questions like, what if Loki had found the Hammer of Thor? The Disney Plus series will operate under a similar anthology conceit, and each episode will offer a new take on how the events of Marvel's existing 21 Plus movie canon might have altered. One of the big issues with Marvel's TV shows like ABC's Agents of the S.H.I.E.L.D. is that they were always forced to be reactive stories to the far more important canon of, of the films, and they were never able to take any big swings in the overarching story because it interfered with the bigger plot lines of the movie. Yeah. Moving over to hypothetical hypothetical what-if framework would allow Marvel to get as weird as it wants without it ruining the next Avengers film. Good move. So with that said, what weird things would you like to, to see? Oh, shit. Um... I would like to see the timeline where Wolverine was the de facto leader of the X-Men and eclipsed Cyclops in that timeline. Okay. And, you know, got to get rid of Jean Grey in a more serious mm -hmm. way. I would like to see the timeline in which Deadpool uh, was cured of his cancer through the Weapon X program mm -hmm. instead of, like, having his weird fucking psychotic shit going on. Right. Yeah. Um... I would like to see a timeline wherein uh, the Silver Surfer <clears throat> gets to ride the big kahuna wave. <laughs> really ended out on a low note. Yeah, it was like, a low note. Compared to everything else. like No, okay. But uh, for real, Silver Surfer, I would like to see uh, the timeline in which he is not abducted from his home planet by Galantis. Hmm. Is... Oh, never mind. My, my, my question was going to be really off topic. Oh, oh, here's what we you could do. Uh, fucking, you could have a Kree warrior become the Silver Surfer. Because mm. basically Galactus is just bebopping around the fucking universe yeah. looking for... Surfer dudes. Yeah, looking for fucking bros <laughs> to ride sick waves. Okay, I know one. The, the, the timeline where... Uh, Carol takes the Tesseract with her instead of leaving it on oh. Earth. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, bleep. <laughs> or uh, the timeline where Cap dies in World War II instead of getting and frozen. Bucky, it, yeah. or like maybe Bucky's the guy that gets the serum. Yeah. 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 That's a fucking good one. Or, I mean, if the Red Skull ends up becoming the good guy from taking the serum. I mean, if we're talking about things that are, like, specifically in that universe. Right. Uh, what if, instead of it being uh, Iron Man that got hit with the vision of, uh, of Thanos and him being stuck in his head for six years since mm -hmm. Infinity War, and it being, like, Captain America? I was going to wait until the, um, the the Captain Marvel review to talk about the trailers but we missed most of them anyway um so the only one i really wanted to talk about was um uh dark phoenix mm. uh the new trailer for it mm -hmm. yeah this looks it looks ambitious you know it looks okay we've here's, already seen the story of here's the right and here's what i what i feel like if the setup of if this movie had the setup the, of the original of the last stand as far as like the characters and everything going into it, I would feel like this would be the better take on it. Right. But because of, like, um, Hugh Jackman's contract is up and he's not going to be in it, because of all of these new X-Men characters I don't really give a shit about, the ones I give the least shit about is um, Jean Grey and Cyclops. Right. So, yeah. like... Yeah, they weren't established in the previous movies in the series. Not right. well enough. Not well yeah. enough to get into the Dark Phoenix part of everything. Right. But with that with that said, like, the setting and everything, the way it looks, it looks like it could be good if the last, like, four movies hadn't built to it being shit and they right. weren't, like, again, doing the Dark Phoenix without Wolverine, which right. you really, really can't do. Yeah. Mm. He's integral to Jean Grey's conflict and all this. Right. She's, like, sort of caught between her, her role as being, like, 
Yeah. It's this the ethical co- quandary of like her accessing her full power and just being who she wants to be and like that's kind of ha- who she is when she's with Wolverine. Right. But when she's with Cyclops, she's kind of just fulfilling her role as she has throughout the rest of her life. And I mean in the in the trailer, or, I mean well even in this just as, in this universe like Cyclops and uh Jean Grey look like kids. They all look like kids. Right. Mm-hmm. Fucking uh, 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 James McAvoy looks like a kid still. Right. Like he looks like they look like they tried to make him older, but at the same time, he still. They also look like they're just like he just looks, getting into their thirties. Yeah. yeah. He just looks. He just looks like a fucking kid who caught cancer in college. Yeah. yeah. Like last week. Yeah. yeah. Just shaved his head. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. He's like, I already know I'm going into chemo like six months from now, so I'm definitely right. gonna be dead. Like, yeah. it might as well go ahead and get it out of the way already. Yeah. yeah. Don't want Fucking ex wife or Dr. Manhattan showing up to greet them. Look, it looks cool. They made it seem like in the beginning of the trailer that Jean kills somebody, kills somebody from the team, right? And I have a feeling that totally on brand, huh? That's totally on brand. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, 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 totally. But uh, the question is who? I, I have a huge feeling that they're gonna end up making it Mystique. It's 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 usually Cyclops that ends up dying in this, yeah. Story arc. But is in the it? beginning of the yeah. trailer, she said, "Why dream you do that? She was my friend." Right. Which made it seem like it was Mystique that right. she killed. I mean, unless. But it could just have been referring to that scene where she threw her like into the side of a building. I mean, you know, Cyclops could be gender fluid, and you don't really, you don't really know what gender he is. Why would Jean Grey assume? I mean, they they could be pulling, pulling a Marvel. I mean, and making a fake part of a trailer. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Like fucking <laughs> dick bags. <laughs> like you could be like, hey, let's look at me. Give me the give me the best that I best that I can. Change that one line to throw everybody off the whole <laughs> scent. Seems fair. No, but the, it's such a good fucking set piece and storyline when it's told right. Yeah. Dark Phoenix. Mm-hmm. It just, I don't know. I don't want it to see it be shit again. I don't even need to really see it again cinematically. No, but I, I would, I would like to see it done done well. Right. But um, it's, it's just, I don't trust it. You yeah. Know? No. I think. I think X Men honestly would work better, um, serial wise. For sure, there's so many characters involved, yeah. so many different interwoven plot lines. Right. Yeah. And with that, um, the Dark Phoenix would work as a as an event. Even a whole season mm-hmm. of of that would be way better than just one movie, or even a like a two part movie, because it's yeah. just not it's just not built for something right. like that. They it's a just, saga. It's not. Yeah. Uh, film they did the same thing with apocalypse were, were in the original trilogy were there points of like pre-showing of like the phoenix coming out no because it's mm. it doesn't really really happen like like that like it's uh just kind of <laughs> i'm the phoenix now oh she gets oh oh i'm most familiar with the uh um cartoon version of it and it's been a while but she's just Jean and she's already like super powerful as a, as a psychic right and then she gets hit with the fucking phoenix energy whatever way it happens yeah. and then she dies right. and then is comes, reborn is yeah. reborn as the phoenix and yeah. then and somehow Jean's still in there and Jean fights through right, eventually right, right. and fucks Logan and all that shit yeah, yeah. You, you but, see, but it's like it's it she doesn't get the power of the Phoenix until all that shit happens, but you generally see in Jean all the conflict leading up to what would yeah. become the main issue with her being the Phoenix. Because it's still, like, within her, the, the fucking shitty, crazy-ass Phoenix shit that mm-hmm. she ends up doing after she's resurrected beforehand. It's just that whenever she dies, she loses the part of her personality that keeps all that shit in check and right. makes her, like, human or whatever. So, I mean, maybe this one is just going to be like, are they planning on making another X-Men movie after this one? No, this is, um... This is the, the fucking last, the last of the last? Yeah. Oh, okay. There well, was never gonna, mind, then. Um, because I'm pretty Why sure... Why does the last movie Jazu tell the same story? I mean, because it was already in the, in the pipeline in production whenever the deal went through with Disney. I'm, su- I'm surprised that this one actually got made. I'm surprised they didn't just call it a loss, to be honest with you. Like, big dirty dude. Hmm. I mean, X Force, but I don't think that's gonna. If that happens, that'll be under Fox under Disney sh- by that point. Fox already showed off the X Force, and they all died. That 
Well, they, yeah. they yeah. still had, it was still in production. Was it? Yeah. Did they ever actually come out with that, uh, it was supposed to be like a more of a horror type X-Men movie. I can't remember what it was called, but they were all in, in an asylum. Oh, I know what you're talking and about. And there was no, something like was, coming through the that walls was one that and got, shit. That was one that got dropped. It got dropped? They had trailers out for it and everything. It looks so good. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, that's why when I saw this trailer, I was shocked that this one, one was the one that was coming out. Because they've shown multiple trailers for other X-Men movies that did get dropped. Like yeah. Gambit? Mm-hmm. Fucking ga- mm. Could have so much potential. Yeah. What are they on? Phase 4 right now? Yeah, they'll be going into Phase, phase 4. Oh, they're going into Phase 4? Yeah. Phase 5 is just going to be so good. Yeah. Especially, like, once what they have everything. Show? Don't worry about it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I really don't. I think that we won't see um, X-Men in the MCU until the next Avengers movie. I think that that's where we'll get get some introduced, a la Scarlet Witch yeah. and, uh, I mean, ironically, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, Witch and Quicksilver. Right. But... Um, <laughs> but in the same, same way, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. No, I'm saying that in Wait. the same way we were introduced to them in an ensemble movie and then got to know them over mm-hmm. more movies, um, yeah. introduced to some X Men characters. But ironically, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are X Men characters to begin with. Who do you think will be the first X Men character that we get introduced to? Um, I think a new Wolverine. Nah, I, I kind of doubt I it. Think I think Beast. Yeah, I was honestly thinking Beast. Beast? Yeah. yeah, why Beast? Because he's like. He's a technician. He's the, probably the most intelligent of them. Right. Oh, yeah. And Xavier. But yeah, and he's, like, so he's one of the upperclassmen and closer to Xavier, so right. he's a good link to introduce the rest of them. But if it, mean. like, I feel like it would, like, they would try to do something more vague and probably try to use a character that, just like with uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, mm-hmm. like, they would try to use somebody that was I could see less involved but, n- but knew about mm-hmm. everything. Emma Frost? Maybe. I was going to say either Beast or Mystique if she's still considered by the X-Men. But, mm-hmm. but they're both I such they're both such high-priority characters in, in the cast cool. that's going on right now. They're, like, they're, they're super big. Like, they're the closest thing. Like, they're going to be in the last film that's in from it. I feel like, like they might go with, try to go with something more vague and slowly introduce that. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's either going to be something super vague or something that everyone recognizes immediately. Like, actually put, like, Gambit. Or uh, Gambit would be cool. Gambit would be a cool like first person to, to introduce him to there. He's not a huge person, but he already knows that all these other things exist. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Shield and everyone else have to know that the X Men exist as well. How can well, they tie that into this already world, like already made world? I mean, I think the only way it could really make sense is if it's still like, I mean, obviously wiping everything that we've seen off the table. It's just the, the original core. Th- like four or five mutants mm-hmm. and the professor. It's not a. It's just a ragtag group. They're like in hiding and stuff. Like, right. So they're it's not like recognized or anything. Like a whole bunch of vague mutants, like showing off that side of the world. Right. And it could be like something like uh, post Thanos or something. Like people with the mutant gene were like activated after the was it after the snap after yeah. the snap or something. That wasn't would be neat. wasn't the uh, mutant gene? It had something to do with. Uh, it's the same reason that Thanos is purple. There's a there's yeah, a yeah. It's mm-hmm. uh, descendants of the the fucking uh, what are they army. called? Yeah, yeah, like celestials, eternals. Yeah. No, not it's, it's the, the it's the bad one yeah, of those titans. No, 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 no bad no. one of those. Like they're you're, uh, you're right on there though. Yeah, the, the the celestials gave birth to the fucking eternals, and the eternals had the opposite to them, which was the it's like some really it starts with a D. It's like an overarching term. For uh, Deviants, yes. Is that the deviants? I'm pretty sure. It's, I'm pretty sure. No, maybe uh, it, it was a. That it was a gene. Sense. It was a gene that was in them. Right. And maybe g- becoming a part of the Soul Stone, which was owned by Thanos, gave them a little bit of that. No, it sounds too stupid. Can't. I can't even. No, no I don't even want to finish it. Well, remember there was there was that retcon, and we talked about a few times in the visual dictionary with Scarlet Witch. To say that the uh, yeah. was it the Mind Stone, yeah, um, uh, may have unlocked latent abilities in her. Right. So I think that's kind of laying the possibly laying the groundwork for the yeah, because she the was infi- the Infinity Stones unlock 
like latent right. abilities that people yeah. already have. Yeah, because it's possible that the intrinsic sum can make you express your genetic mutation. Right. Yeah. You know? I mean, that would that would be perfectly fine. Right. I'd be cool with that. Like, I mean, because uh, Magneto would be a cool first character also for them to start out with. I would love to see someone who is um, bad but, before good. Yeah, and I don't. That's the thing I like about the X Men is I don't really consider the Brotherhood to be bad. No, they're just they have different meanings. Like yeah. to me, for the same goal, it's a Malcolm X, Martin Luther King kind of deal. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not like an ideological split as far as like a left right good evil paradigm, but as far as like how do direct that goal? direct action right. versus passive action kind right. of thing. Yeah, which is a, a much more dynamic conflict. Because, you know, Magneto and Professor Xavier care about each other. Right. They pro possibly more than anybody They're else. They're best friends. Yeah. They've yeah. been best friends for a long time. Right. Yeah. And the fact that they have to fight each other because of their beliefs is stronger than just, you know, oh, he fucking did some shit to me before that I didn't know. Right. So, knowing you will like this news, following the box office and critical success of Thor Ragnarok, Taika Waititi is currently loading up on upcoming projects with the enthusiasm of Jordan Peele after Get Out or Guillermo del Toro on pretty much any dime. And today, Deadline reports that Waititi, whose TV adaptation of What We Do in the Shadows premieres later this month, who has, who has a new movie called Jojo Rabbit coming out, and who has signed on to direct an episode of Disney Plus' The Mandalorian, is throwing another project onto his ever-going pile, a TV adaptation of Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits for Baby Driver. What? It was Beavis, by the way. Yeah, yeah. A TV adaptation of Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits for Baby Driver and House of Cards production company MRC Studios and Apple's thus far mysterious streaming service. Martini is committed to writing and directing a pilot for a series based on Gilliam's appealing, rambling 1981 fantasy adventure whose tone once described by our own William Hughes as a, quote, mixture of bitter cynicism, screwball comedy, and outright wonder, end quote, is an ideal match for Waititi's creative sensibilities. Fucking hell yeah. Right? Gilliam has himself announced that he was working on a TV version of Time Bandits back in 2015, but given the two Helmers' respective batting averages in terms of actually finishing projects, maybe it's for the best that he turned it over to Waititi. Waititi's such a good director. Mm hmm. Hmm. I mean, well, then again, I don't know anything other than Ragnarok that he's done. <laughs> I mean,. For me, just on that alone, though, because I can put that in comparison to the other Thor movies and see how how different it is, so yeah. see how much of a voice he had in that movie. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, those are completely different movies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Honestly. Like, I went back and watched Avengers recently as well, and, like, Thor has almost completely changed as a character. Oh, yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Like, he's done a bit of a... Like, he had goofy lines before... Like, in the first Thor movie and in the second Thor movie, he had right. goofy lines, but nothing compared to... Like, they just made it, basically made him an idiot that only knows Asgard way. His character was a lot a lot more developed in Ragnarok, so mm -hmm. his goofy lines were a lot more grounded and not just, yeah. just oh, here's the weird alien dude yeah. that's going to just throw a one-liner to. Very true. Yeah, hearing him say those lines because you've heard him be so serious just kind of made it easier, I guess. Right. Last of Thor 2. Mm. What a movie. No thanks. Yeah, right? It wasn't bad, bad. It was just not up to par. I am I think that's probably my least favorite of the ones that I've seen, but that's probably my least favorite Marvel movie. So, Waititi directed uh, five episodes of The Inbetweeners. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> and four episodes of Flight of the Concords. Oh, that's fucking uh, awesome. That's good. Okay. In addition to a whole bunch of, you know, like, indie films and that stuff. That totally makes sense yeah. for, for Flight of the Concords. Yeah. yeah. Those guys are, like, right up each other's alley. Mm. <laughs> so I'm, and Gilliam, that's a nice, that's a nice match for, uh, for YPD. Yeah, that's perfect, then. Because, uh, yeah. Because Gilliam was the one who did the, did the animations, right? Or I think was Gilliam it? was the one... Wasn't Jones the one doing the... Yeah, it was one of the Terrys. Yeah, I think Gilliam was the... Was he the one directing and shit? I, they both directed, but I think... Which one directed Life of Brian? Because that's the one that... Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's my favorite. I Jason think, Siegel. I think it's Gilliam. I think you're right. 
but I don't, I don't remember. Cause they, they have two fucking Terrys. How are there two Terrys? Right. No, it was it was Jones. It was Jones. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah cause they both did um. Holy Grail. Mm. Yeah. Like Monty Python. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. I just watched it today. Nice. Yeah. Do, do, do. Is it the first time you watched it? No. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah. I didn't mean to be like yeah. that emotional okay, about Gilliam's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gilliam's the American. He's the one who right. did all the animation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fuck yeah. Because I love Terry Gilliam's animation style. Yeah, it's so like effective and sparse and strange. Yeah. That's that's probably one of the biggest selling points of the the series. Oh yeah, for sure. It's the only thing that makes it feel in any way kind of connected. Yeah, it's also, it's also makes it very, very unique compared to the yeah. rest of them. That, that might be the first variety show I can think of that had that kind of animation throughout. I mean, if you look back like the Moby and shit like that. I mean, right. Doing it today. Um, oh, let's see, we just watched the... Uh, you seen the new Aladdin trailer? That thing, yeah. Oh, oh. I've seen one of them. Well, the newest one came out today. Okay, so no. So no, it doesn't look bad. Oh. I have some. I have a few reservations. I mean, yeah, I'm reserved. Yeah, There's I'm a- not a fan of like the music being the exact same that it is. Like, a whole new world came on in the midst of it, mm. and their voices are almost like they're trying their best to like it meld it exactly right in there. Exactly the same. Yeah. like delivery. It could be the same. You, you could add in a little bit more auto tune and Jasmine, but it's it's the same. I didn't even really really notice much tune. Of course, I only listened to it a couple times and didn't really like. I was listening to like the, the character and delivery was just like spot on to the original, which I don't. I didn't entirely mind. I love that song. But love that song. it's been I stuck in my head since. One then. thing I did mind was there was a little tease of um, of a Will Smith rendition of yeah, of you never had a friend like me. Yeah. Oh man, but you also see plenty of scenes of the fucking uh, make way for Prince Ali. What is that song? Fabulous E. Whatever it is. But uh, I, I kept I kept in t- in touch with the spirit of the song, Aaron. <laughs> Fabulous E. I mean, and that's what I feel like they're gonna do with uh, "You Never Had a Friend Like Me." Oh yeah, it's I'm gonna just, be a very Will Smith rendition version yeah. of it. Oh, for sure. I'm just gonna man. It's 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 gonna be. Uh, you ain't never had a friend like me. Twist. See, in my mind, I was just thinking Come on, Fresh Aladdin, Prince let's get of Bel-Air, with <laughs> but with the genie thing in it. Yo, this is a story y'all about how my I turned into a genie. <laughs> <laughs> my lamp got <laughs> rubbed and turned upside down. <laughs> now, there were a few um, diversions to the, uh, to, the, to the template. Like, there was a giant Iago yeah. chasing Aladdin. Yeah. It's got to be Iago. There's this like there's a small there's a spot in the midst of them in the trailer doing the whole a whole new world song, where you see Aladdin riding on the lamp through town, mm-hmm. through town, broad daylight, and you just yeah, see a carpet. giant what? What did I say? Lamp. Riding that's what I meant. Lamp. Yeah, that's, that's a much he's riding on the lamp. <laughs> but no, he's riding on carpet. Is he going for tips or what's he doing? <laughs> no, but uh, he's riding on carpet and like you just see him like move like do like a little swirl thing and then you just see this giant bird crash into a building and then like flow this way and start moving that like start moving forward yeah as if like jafar made him giant right. and started fucking with him which would be really cool because i feel like that was one of the one of the big issues i have with aladdin is like that part of the movie, like the third act when Jafar gets the sorcerer powers and everything, isn't really explored all that much, no. especially once he gets the genie powers. Mm-hmm. I would like to see that yeah. like expanded out a little bit more. Yeah. What else we got? Oh, well, <laughs> there's another movie that's coming out on May 30th. It is the animated movie of Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. March 30th. That's March. what I said. I know, just re- reinforcing what yeah. you said. Make yeah. sure they, they heard you. March 30th. <laughs> Did I say March? 100%? I have no idea what you said. You said, I, I, said I said one of the M's. Definitely one of the M's. Yeah. But uh, the trailer for it came out today, and it's like, uh, it's all four of them, and they're, they're coming in, and they're like, uh, yeah, we were, we were tracking down Shredder, and we've heard, this, uh, we've heard these rumors of uh, 
of this like vast an- man. Anthrop- yeah, yeah, but they were they were thinking that he was going to be like they Anthrop- are. Yeah. Like they were gonna yeah anthropomorphic like, like a man uh, bat. A, a man bat. But they said like bat creature or something like that yeah. to that effect. Yeah. But of course he wasn't. And then they see that and then like uh, Shredder and Ra's al Ghul team up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna say I would love to see. Batman be like confused when they're confused that he's not an actual bat. He's like, "What do you mean I'm not a bat?" <laughs> <laughs> well, man, the 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 guy I don't know who's doing the voice for Batman, but he he sounds like he's trying his best to do a uh, Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy. Mm. He sounds like he's trying so hard to be Kevin Conroy, That's but he can't be Kevin Conroy because Kevin Conroy is the only Kevin Conroy that can Kevin Conroy. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, another, like, like basically, like, Raz, uh, Raz al Ghul and Shredder team up. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. Uh, they team up, so the Foot Ninja and uh, the League of Shadows, they, uh, like, they basically team up, and then they go break into Arkham and break everyone out of Arkham. They're like... This is the of guy course. that. This is the of guy course that. Of course they do. You see, this is the guy that we can use to take ba- uh, to keep Batman out of our keep Batman out of our way. And then you see a light shine on. Guess who it is? Right. Guess who it is? Joker. Killer Croc. No, you were right on the first one. Oh, okay. You know what? Fucking Gotham. Put your fucking villains in different buildings. <laughs> This keeps happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, make a make you, a second or third Arkham that you can just separate them all no, from. No, 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 hold on. This keeps happening at the um, insane, insane Asylum that the Wayne Foundation obviously obviously funds that Bruce Wayne puts all of these villains into. Mm. And they keep breaking out. Yeah. Huh, mm. weird. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Whoa, is this all going back into, like, Bruce Wayne wants uh, wants them to come out so he can keep being Batman. Um, um, there is a fucking there punch. I'm yeah, Mr. Kung Fu. Yeah, um, <laughs> Bruce Bruce Wayne is the greatest villain in Gotham because there is no uh, monetary incentive for Bruce Wayne to actually do something about the crime and poverty in Gotham City on an on actual structural level, even though he has the power to do so. That's very true. You know, he could just like end poverty in Gotham if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't. He just wants to punch thugs. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, swooped in and fucking ninja kicked him in the face. Yeah, yeah he was just like, trying to feed his family, Batman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But it's like Gotham still sucks even with the villains gone. Do uh, Do you have anything else? <laughs> no. Cool. Because I want to end on this because this is a... Very exciting story for me. We still do not have a uh, trailer, not even a teaser, or a title for Star Wars Episode Nine, but we do have some news. Um, still think it's Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar Isaac confirms that Star Wars Episode Nine Endgame is the end of the Skywalker saga. Okay, mm-hmm. fucking all right. The final chapter of the current Star Wars saga is only a few months away. While there's still a lot of questions regarding how things will wrap up, one thing seems to be certain. The Skywalker saga will wind down with Episode Nine. Oscar Isaac, Poe Dameron, confirmed that during during a recent appear, appearance on the Today Show, oh. it is the end of the entire Skywalker saga, he said. Nine stories. This is the culmination of the entire, of the entire thing. What J.J. has done in the entire Lucasfilm is incredibly fulfilling. It's also special for us because you get to learn a lot more about these characters. I just couldn't say anything about the film or its secrets. However, he did talk about Carrie Fisher, late actress who portrayed Princess Leia. Previously unused footage will be used in Episode Nine, which we already knew. So, cool. That. Yep. So it's basically saying, hey, Leia's gonna die in this movie. Oh, we are. Yeah, we're. I mean, we already know she's gonna die in this movie, but. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll see. Like, well, it really depends on what they what they do but i'm sure like whatever happens with with ray we'll see her her story story going forward and um kylo which i kind of feel like he'll probably die even if it's like sacrificial you think he'll die at the end of this probably um i think that all this uh, the skywalker line is just going to end like like permanently i'm not sure how 
adventurous than one favorite character. Favorite character. Episode nine. I mean, I out of all the games. No, just one. Just the first I haven't one. I haven't played. I haven't played the third one. I, I haven't played the Inquisition. Have you played the second one? The yeah. older I get, okay. the more so Jedi. The first one's yeah. the best one still. To me, and I don't. I don't want it to feel safe, but. Um, I felt, I definitely feel like The Last Jedi is the, like, stre stretching the envelope of this, of this, uh, trilogy, and I don't think it needs to go, like, too far out of, out of the right. box, but I really don't know, like, I haven't seen anything for it, so I don't really know right. what I'm to, to expect, honestly. Um, like, Return is my, le easily my least favorite movie of the original trilogy, and uh, Revenge of the Sith is easily my favorite movie of the prequels. Right. Do you think Luke will be in this one? Oh yeah. You think we're I mean, gonna Force, see Force Ghost, but yeah, I definitely think that he'll be, he'll be in there. Throw some Ewan in there, and then make a fucking Obi Wan Kenobi movie. Ugh. I'm sorry, I just really want Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan. I want one more. <laughs> I want one more out of him. I he's got it in him. Oh, he's yeah. he's at that perfect age to be. On Tatooine, while uh, Luke is still a baby, Obi Wan. That's kind of boring, though. Yeah, we don't know if it is. There's plenty of things you might be able to do on Tatooine. On one planet in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. That's kind of fucking boring. I yeah. mean, it doesn't. Maybe not even. Where there on, are no Star Wars. Maybe in just on one planet. Maybe I mean he exiled himself, but maybe he gets into some sort of personal problem that he's got. I would like to know more about Obi Wan in general because I remember whenever I was younger, I had one of the um, just random books for Star Wars and it had like Obi-Wan having a lover and like they had a kid or something and something happened that was crazy dramatic that traumatized him or something. Oh, that's the most character destro destroying thing I've ever heard. Yeah. What up, girl? Yeah. I see you're in prison. I, I don't really think that I like <laughs> what it does to Obi-Wan's character for him to have left Tatooine while Luke was a child, though. Right. Because that's his whole thing is thing there protecting Luke until Luke is old enough right. to do the thing. That's like his penance for right. his failure with Anakin. Right. Well, could uh, maybe a Qui-Gon movie before, he's, before he gets saddled with a Padawan? Maybe a, a young Obi-Wan and a young Qui-Gon. He had a movie. Buddy Cop movie. No. I don't want to see any character that I already know. I feel that. That's fair. I definitely think that Star Wars benefits from long form um, storytelling, like doing like sequential, like not just one film here, like like because then it just kind of just feels like just checkpoints of like um, story beats and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, really? Everything we know about Han Solo happened in a two day period. Really? That's that's interesting. <laughs> um, so I would like to see, like, another, like, saga, but yeah. I'd like to see it be something completely new and different, and... Can you have Star Wars take place in a, just, like, a, a neighboring galaxy? I mean, maybe. I mean, you could focus long, on... A long, long time ago in another galaxy far yeah. away. Yeah, I mean, you could focus long, on... A long time ago in a galaxy even farther away. I mean, you could focus <laughs> on the outer on the outer rim. Right. To where, like... The where the empire didn't really have much, much impact. I mean, that would be interesting to see, right. like the part that didn't really feel the difference between the republic yeah. and the empire and the new republic and all the all the changes that are just on the outskirts of the jurisdiction of society. I just you know I don't know to what point. I want to see them push it because I don't know to what point anything like this would stop being Star Wars. Like, is it the themes that contain it? Is it the setting? Is it the right? Because there are enough potential characters in this in this galaxy that you could tell an infinite number of stories, but what makes it Star Wars is it all these themes of like binary good and evil, or like it not actually being that way, or just like right, like because I mean it was kind of ham fisted into into Rogue One. You don't need the Force to tell a Star Wars movie, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't need the the Jedi. You don't need the Republic uh, or the Empire. Um, you know, you don't need 
storm stormtroopers or um, re rebels or any any of that stuff. So, what what is the thing that makes it the that makes it the thing? Like, is it just conflict and then unrecognizable galaxy? Right. Is it? Yeah. Huh. I you know. It's worth exploring. We will see you guys next week. Bye.